it's like there's this fucking this is cat in the apartment okay <laughs> i could talk about this for the rest of my life yeah like how angry i am about this yeah like there's a cat in this apartment and so what'll happen is that if i want to leave the house mm-hmm. which is a thing that i do often right i like to go to places right because right? you're not the cat in the apartment i'm not the cat in the apartment uh so if i want to leave the apartment what I have to do is that I'll open my door to leave my room. The yeah. cat will run into my room and run under my bed. I keep my door closed. So I need to now like pull the cat out of there under my bed. Mm-hmm. Do that. Close the door. Uh, open the front door. Cat runs out. I have to go grab the cat. The cat will have stepped in mud. I will pick up the cat. I will forget about this. The mud will get on my sweater. So I have to oh, go man. in, change sweaters, and then repeat this process while holding the cat away from me while I drag it back inside. Whose cat and then is close this? The door. It's my this is roommate's cat. So now you're responsible for this cat that you have no emotional connection yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, you could just lose it once and never have that problem again. <laughs> That's the other this, option. It's a very easy. Just like, yeah, just let it keep running. Nobody you know? would blame you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does this. Mm. Yeah, I've I've like thought about punching this cat. I've like tossed it. You you tossed ever, it. You ever tossed a cat? That seems like a victimless crime, but it seems like something. I mean, they're comfortable. They're comfortable landing on their feet. Yeah, that's the thing. seems like, like it, an it, asshole it, thing to do. Though it doesn't <laughs> hurt them, but it gets the rage out for me. You know, uh, if I just like if I like throw him like four feet, he'll land. Right. Fine. It depends it where get. you throw them, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I throw him into a lawnmower. I throw him into a vat of lava. Right. Yeah. That would be. I hate it. No, I can imagine cats are assholes. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm just like trying to find a, a new place. And it's hard and Toronto's weird for all that stuff. Yeah. It's expensive, man. It's expensive. And like, I don't know, I I feel like like I'm almost like not a real comedian because I still want like nice things. Okay. I still am attracted to this. Like a lot of people that you meet nowadays will like, they'll be like, no, nah, man, you got to be in the grind. And right. Like, who cares what you're Part living, of the what process. you're doing, you know, live in a, like a horrible place. Yeah. Know? They tell you to use yeah. it. Like, yeah, yeah, they're like, use, use the it. hardship. <laughs> it's like, yeah, use how bad, I feel, well, I feel bad. Good, right. I'll use how bad I feel, which I guess works sometimes, but like, I don't know. No, I'd rather I like be... feeling nice. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's like, oh, you got to be like sad. Like, no, you don't have to be sad. You can be a happy person. I agree with have you. Have nice things happen. Yeah. yeah. Those people are assholes that want to treat you badly and be yeah. like, it's for your own good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm shitty. I'm doing this for your art. You. It's just an excuse to, yeah. be, to be a dick to everybody. <laughs> I'm not shitty for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a shitty for you. You're yeah. making me the, be this shitty. It's either that or it's like a, like, a long-term justification for how bad their life is they're like <laughs> they're like no i'm choosing to live right. in this apartment and not get a real job people yeah. seem to do that where they will put themselves like in an idealized uh, version of like this is me living the dream and this is part of the dream like you're just not showering and it's not helping anybody. <laughs> yeah. You're not an artist. Yeah, just you just look uncomfortable. Yeah, and your art's not being better for it. Yeah, yeah. I think you just got to live the life that's available to you. Yeah, you just don't have to downgrade or upgrade for the sake of yeah. Like, yeah. Don't purposely like, do anything. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. if because, your eccentricities are like, you know, this level, then your art needs to be this level. You can't be like ex- like you just shitty, and then your art sucks. Yeah. yeah, you have to have your art follow your shittiness. I've met. Uh, have you ever met those people? Like they seem kind of weird. She's like, oh, I bet they got something going on, and they yeah. don't. And you're like, oh, <laughs> that's true. Like, oh man, you're not as cool as you should be. Oh no, for how annoying you yeah, are. Yeah, you have no justification for the way you are. <laughs> no anxiety, depression. Deep-seated worries about the future, past, yeah. nothing? <laughs> you're, you're just this person? Yeah, whoa, <laughs> weird. Get out of here. Uh, I was just thinking because, like, we haven't... What's a nerdy uh, a nerdy comic? There's not many, right? It's Chris Hardwick. Definitely nerdy comic I'm, is Chris. Yeah, I, I think, um, like, as I think we've all probably seen, the nerd label, like, kind of mm-hmm. is, like, evaporated over time. It's yeah. less and less of a thing every day. Right. Chris Hardwick's a freaking nerd though. I'll yeah, he's a proper right nerd. Like, he has a problem. Nerd, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which which I like because you get a completely different flavor of uh comedy? Of, yeah, of comedy from yeah. him. So you you know, he didn't have to try to be well, he was tortured though. That's the problem. that's the thing yeah. too. I mean like he did live a very interesting life. Most comics are though. Yeah. With that uh, with that alcoholism. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is not a nerdy thing traditionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, alcoholism, it isn't a nerdy yeah. thing. It's more like a... It's a weird juxtaposition of him playing like Dungeons and Dragons and then like drinking himself into a coma, you know? Like the Basically. two things that don't really fit together. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> his he, nerdiness doesn't have... I think... <laughs> he fixes himself with because of his nerdiness. That's like, oh, I like see. he uses his obsessive obsessiveness about stuff and he just pointed it in another direction. Yeah, I, he I just became, read about that. He became like a super productive person. Mm-hmm. That's, so that's... I just didn't realize how bad of a shape he was in oh you see a picture now versus a picture 15 years ago yeah he looks so much better now and he's like 50 yeah were you like 17 and you were like hey 
my life has completely gone to the shitter. I need to start like stand up <laughs> comedy. Is that how you got into uh, this? Or it was it's a weird <laughs> you hit the wall at seventeen <laughs> situation. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, everything's falling apart. I like <laughs> no. I uh, I was doing slam poetry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Were you were you trying to be woke? I uh, I I don't know what I was, was trying to be. I think I was like I was just like trying to. I, I would write these like funny poems about mm-hmm. like girls that I wanted to talk to. Oh, okay. Because that's all I. Yeah. I didn't know how to talk to them. Right. I didn't know you could just like write jokes. So I was like writing these kind of funny poems, and then I did that for a while, mm-hmm. and then uh, I've never been able to like explain this to anybody else properly. But like I'd always loved comedy, but it never occurred to me to just download and then listen to comedy. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this thing I love. I guess I'll just never experience it at all. <laughs> Uh, and so it like clicked one day. I was like, oh, you can just download. I download music all the time. I'll just download comedy albums. And I just listened to those for like a year, yeah. maybe a year and a half from like 16 to 17. Also, while still doing slam poetry, you know? <laughs> like, because like, you couldn't stop. You were clearly yeah. getting all the girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was it working? Yeah, that's a good question. I was like, it right, was yeah. not working. <laughs> It was, it wasn't not, it wasn't making anything worse, but it wasn't making any, anything better. It was kind of like a, a thing I pattern. did. Yeah. Oh man, that's the worst type of slam poet. Like, yeah. I'm a bad and, one. And the, t- the topics that you chose is literally, you're like the intermission of slam poetry yeah. nights. Yeah. Everyone's talking about like struggle, racism, yeah, all that stuff. The and then there's one guy who's going to talk about superheroes and hitting on girls. Yeah. And then we're going to go back to the important stuff again. Yeah, I don't know. I like it was also annoying because I don't mind slam poetry as, as like an art form, as pretentious as that is to say. <laughs> mm. I think some of it can be like cool stuff. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like yeah. I was doing, I guess, essentially the open mics of these slam poetry things, and so a lot of people were really bad. Like I was, I was bad, but they were so much worse. I gave you confidence. And also, they weren't even trying to be funny. They were just being <laughs> serious, which is like a much harder thing to watch right. someone <laughs> be bad at. Like they're trying to talk about their struggles. It's like, well, you're bad at writing. It's, <laughs> That's all you pick up on. <laughs> Start with this struggle first because yeah. it's, it's affecting me. Your and then move struggle. on to your own. I, then- I, yeah, I never saw this the slam poetry things, but this is, it is dark. But like a friend of mine, uh, she was a writer. She sent me a piece about her being assaulted. And I read it and it was, it was really good. I was like, thank God this is really good. Because mm. how awkward that, would that have to be? Because you, you can't tell the other person be like, your experience is so valid. I'm so sorry. But also this could use some punching up. Right. Like, what do you- is this first draft of your assault? Yeah. You should get assaulted again so you get better at yeah, writing just this. like, oh, jeez. <laughs> you know? Thank God she's a good writer. But. Jeez. And that made you like be like, all right, so for me, I need to switch to stand up or... Uh, it, or just once you got up there and said such a bad poem, you're like, this is a terrible poem, but it was funny. You just do it without the poem aspect. It just didn't rhyme at all. Yeah, it, it, was, it was, again, like, it was all, like, weird coincidences. Like, in my head, I'm like, I probably would have ended up in stand-up eventually. It just would have taken a lot longer. My, uh, my high school substitute teacher for English 12 was a guy named John Cullen, who's, mm-hmm. a, like, a Yucks roster headliner based okay. out in Vancouver. And, like, he showed up and, like, I don't know, because he didn't tell us that he did stand-up because he was, like, being our teacher. I don't right. think he mentioned it. But I found out through somebody or something that he did stand-up. And I saw him and I was like, wait, you're a person. I'm a person. That means real people like you and also like me can just do stand-up. And, I, and then from then on, I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. That's it awesome. was very straightforward. He, That's like, pointed awesome. me towards an open mic called The Sin Bin. Oh. I was 17. <laughs> Sounded scandalous. It was just the back room of some, like, shitty pub. Yeah. Uh, that you is make, now defunct in Vancouver. You make interesting choices. I mean, just by coming in here through our garage. <laughs> but similarly, when you have, like, a, a high school teacher who's like, hey, go to The Sin Bin when you're 17. Good things yeah. will happen. You're like, I'll try it. I'm like, I should be dead. <laughs> yeah. Like, I should. So, so many tiny things that I'm like, like oh, this all should have killed me. Sounds like a gay bar. <laughs> sounds... Yeah, like an HIV bin. Sure, <laughs> if you want to go. But just a sin pile bin. of just HIV. A... Yeah, so I have HIV now. Yeah. Uh, I went to the sin and that's bin. how I got AIDS. Yeah. Hey, was this in BC? This is in BC, yeah. Okay, so you were like, uh, you're from Seattle originally? Uh, Born California. I can tell by the... Does he have a... Like a yep. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, yeah, I, I was noticing accent. the same thing. But I left there when I was one, so I don't know why I have the accent. You're very that absorbent. Make sense. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I have no you may idea. Just, this is a lot of TV or something. Maybe. All this, you know, you just rap music that the kids are listening to. You know, yeah, we listen to the head. same music. Yeah. <laughs> we don't talk like that at all. We talk brown. With, I talk with a little bit of brown accent still. You do? I think so. You might, maybe. I record my sets and I listen to them. I'm like, I sound Indian. Why do I sound Indian in yeah. these? 
He goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know. This is not like, this is not like uh, funny, but I think it's, it's interesting how like people's old accents bleed into their new accents. Yeah. Like my dad sounds as white as anybody when he talks. Right. But, but he and other brown and yourself included, like they have the same kind of speech, yeah. the same kind of white person accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you can confuse when I get around Southerners. Yeah, I'll go full Southern. Yeah, you'll slip into that. Oh yeah, yeah with a little <laughs> bit of Indian. Yeah, so it's it's always it's a fun, fun time. Yeah. yeah. What would I fall into? You just sound white, man. I'm just. I'm just you sound like Gian Gomeshi <laughs> with uh with less slightly less bass. Yeah, right. And a little okay. bit less punchy. Yes, yeah. from what I know. Yeah, hopefully a little less punchy. Little hopefully. Jeez. Yeah. But we'll find that was out. Pretty dark. Yeah. Well, he's gone now. Yeah, thank God. Oh, right? Thank from God. The, yeah. from the, from I liked him. Like, I liked this show a lot. Wait, well, I never listened to Q. It was never oh, it a was thing great. for me. Yeah. He was a great interviewer. He yeah, would get into things good, yeah. with, like, he was very good at diving deep and yeah. finding, like, the emotional content of why you drive yourself. Then you also punched women when they weren't expecting it. Yeah, so it's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. My problem was that, he, like, he would punch women when they wouldn't expect it, you know? And that's yeah. not a nice way to figure out if that's her thing or not. Yeah, yeah. That you was you would think problem. for like anything that you're into, you would just be like, hey, by the way, I like, you know, whatever. I like feet. Yeah. Is yeah. that okay with you? That yeah, type of thing. Yeah. You kind of just feel it out. Yeah. There you go. You just don't assume that I'm doing it just right. It's like, oh, yeah, she feels it now. Yeah. And then you like, <laughs> like punch her in the head and hope. It's like, well, all. now you're just fighting a woman. Yeah. Like, that's not sex anymore. And now you you're got, just beating up a and person. And you sucker punched her. Yeah. And then hoped she was into it. Yeah. It which is just like I think it's fine to ask. Like I think it's it would have to be such a specific kink that they would want to be sucker yeah. punched without knowing. And even right. then, I'm sure there's a way to set that up. We're not yeah, scaring. like, like it's like yeah. anywhere anywhere after six o'clock, you make it's okay to punch me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it terminates just, at yeah. nine. Out outside the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> waiting for women with facial bruises. Like, hey, I don't know if it's your thing, <laughs> but I don't know who else to yeah. ask. Like when you do that like slap game with your friends or like, right. like they lose a bet and you're like I can slap you once and the yeah. next week, you know, you just leave that in the air. Right. I think that's a good system. For that's this. a good system. I'm glad we got to the bottom of this. Jesus. I think we really figured it out. We would have figured, we would have saved his career. We yeah. could have saved his career. We should have been managing that guy. <laughs> just ask terrible. before punching. Yeah. It's, Though I feel it's, like his problem was not that he didn't understand how to like be nice to people. I think he just didn't do it. He was a really bad person. Yeah. I think he liked I think it would be the hugest turn on if you surprise punch and they like it and you're like, yeah, right. yeah. I assume. So I don't just, know. He's just rolling that dice all the time. He's like, rolling that but dice. Th- th- oh, I doubt that ever happened. Like, I don't think. I don't think. Must he's, have like, happened it, once. Like maybe that happened the first time, and that's why he's into it. Whenever I see yeah. a guy go up to a girl and try like a really weak line, I'm assuming it worked once. Because there's no way he's been doing no. this for. That is a wrong assumption, my no? friend. No, guys no, are no, like no. you have too yeah. much confidence like, the intelligence. Oh, no, no, no. There's plenty of idiots that are trying the exact same thing. For a long time, Jeez. until uh, until you know something really bad happens to him. Yeah. When I heard his story, I was like, maybe that's what he's into. But then I found out that he was pretty crazy. When he's like, he would bring the girl in, and he would take his teddy bear, and he would turn the teddy bear, and he uh. would say like, "You can't watch what's about to happen." Okay. <laughs> Wait, he has a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had a teddy bear because he would talk to it because it was something to do with like anxiety or something. I think his like therapist told him that you could. Like, uh, right. something yeah. along those lines of that Jesus, uh you just keep digging yeah. you find weirder stuff <laughs> yeah. enough about Gian though pretty dark <laughs> yeah hey Jeez. did you guys bring me on to talk let's, about Gian let's Gimashi? talk about <laughs> let's talk about Bill Cosby okay <laughs> stop here oh, boy. <laughs> this. um coming on you just mentioned that you know the guy who turned you on to comedy that you could relate to was a teacher yeah for me it was like the first time um I saw I was at a, there was a comedy place in, in Houston and they had, I missed Dave Chappelle. Yeah. And then I realized that Dave Chappelle could come to Houston and, and this was when he wasn't that big. The show wasn't on or anything. Right. I was yeah. like, he can come to Houston and he can do stand up and people would watch it. And I was like, it's like a real thing. And I never still thought about going up and do again until yeah. I moved to Toronto. Yeah. But for you at that age, you know, you went up, did you have success early? That you're like, you know, in your teens, then moving from BC to Montreal, doing stand up and now to Toronto, still like still doing stand up. Do you feel like you had success early that kind of or like immediately you got out there? You're like, you know what? I love this and I want to yeah. do this as, as much as I can. I don't know if I was if I was successful early. My first set actually went pretty well. It's like the next mm-hmm. 30 that were pretty tough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's I feel like I like had a little bit of heat on me when I started, but like nothing crazy, just like. Like I was new and I was writing actual jokes 
Whereas I think a lot of people, when they start, they take a different approach where they try and like riff at ideas and kind of just like rant about stuff and slowly that becomes comedy. Yeah. But, like I had jokes that weren't really that funny, but mm-hmm. they were at least jokes and slowly they just be, they're becoming better jokes over time. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, sorry, what was the question? So I, did you yeah. feel like, you know what, this is what I want to do? Like since it brings me so much happiness? Yeah. So you weren't, you didn't have the success. Like right off the bat. No, it it wasn't like I like came out and like started killing like, it. Oh you my know? god, like, it's Amar. Have like, you seen his hair? Yeah, <laughs> like rock. Oh, I still my turban at the time. Where my part guy at the time? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I, I've had it, I've had it off for like only three years now. Oh it's really? Still very. So you new used to, to have like a puggity, a pug. Not not a full pug. So what was, what's that? That like? I guess uh, to describe it to the listeners. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> to like me as well. Yeah, yeah. it's a, a little bun on top of your head. Oh, I've seen the kids wear those. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a junior. Like you graduate to. Yeah, it is junior thing i just like was so non-committal to being a sikh person <laughs> right that i like never upgraded right. like i learned how to tie the pug <laughs> like never upgraded my yeah. my mini pug to a full pug yeah this, this is my first and only form because i was yeah i was spending this all this time like trying to slowly like back out of it and hope my yeah. parents wouldn't notice that i don't like this religion right it's not for me gotcha. and then i just got my hair cut and they were uh, you know pretty incensed well, at that point, it's like you yeah. made a decision. We, yeah. I don't know if you've been to Brampton yet. I had to explain, like, we're in Mississauga now is what I had to tell him because he's like, oh, where's Mississauga? Yeah, I see. So, but Brampton's right up here. Mm-hmm. And you don't know that. It's not here where this aquarium is where I'm pointing, I know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's the brown area. That's right? the yeah. brown. I went to school there. Yeah. And like, it's really cool because brown uncles will just like ride their bicycle and just stop at a bus stop and the bus will come. Yeah. And then they won't get on because they just, for them to just chill. Yeah. It's like back home. They yeah. just ride their bicycles, mm-hmm. wait at bus stops, yeah. go back home. And I've seen some of those smaller pugs. Well, with that said, uh, great head of hair. Thank you. Thank he you. has a whole bit about. Anyways, we will get back. I yeah. mean, that's something we can't talk about bits and stuff. But mm-hmm. if you're in town, watch Amar Singh. He has a bit about his hair. <laughs> hey. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great. You like hair jokes? I got them, baby. That's what I'm about. Um, I did want to ask you this, though. And this is really about the city of Toronto and its comedy scene. What do you think about it so far? Uh, You've been here for a month? month and a half, I okay. guess now. Yeah. It's good here. It's good. It's very much like everyone always told me. It's like, oh, it's Canada's New York. And it very much is that. You can like be on stage every night, yeah. and there's so much talent, and there's so many people to compete with. It's it's cool. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I've mostly been like running just the open mic, so I haven't seen like the best of Toronto. But right. even the people at the mics are all like pretty good. Mm-hmm. So it's it's intimidating. It's fun. It's exciting. Good. Yeah, good stuff, man. Um, okay, maybe I missed a little bit of this, but you said you started. You were born in Cali. Yeah. Right, then you moved to Seattle. Yeah. So so California, we we leave. I'm like one years old. Okay. When we go to, right. uh, to Seattle, yeah. I'm we're in Seattle till I'm or Bellevue, I guess suburb of Seattle. Mm. Uh, there till I'm 11, <clears throat> and then up to Surrey, BC, mm. and then there, uh, then up to Kelowna for school. You guys know Kelowna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelowna for school. Uh, back to Surrey, Kelowna for school, and then Vancouver because I dropped out because I wanted uh-huh. to do comedy. And then Montreal for the last year in Toronto just now. Wow. Yeah. So how's that comedy scene, Montreal versus Toronto? Because Montreal seems to be like that was the place where comedy was alive in Canada. You would think so. Uh, <laughs> Apparently the, the, not. The, the comedians there are, are dope. I like I like all of them. But there's like 30, you know, it's it's a very, really? very small scene. Really? Because they well, have the just for last. Like, you think so. Yeah. yeah. No, but they, they import. It's like it was a thing in Montreal. Like everyone's kind of know they import. All of the oh, talent, yeah. mostly from America, mostly from even like uh, all the Canadian stuff is mostly people from Toronto or Vancouver. Oh. Uh, they have like very little happening in terms of like the local scene, which is unfortunate, you know, because there's a lot of funny people mm. there. But it's because of like the there's so many French people out there. Yeah. And even if you're like bilingual French, you do those people still prefer French comedy. Right. French comedy there is huge. It's a huh. massive industry. Really? Like, yeah. Uh, like Mike Ward. You guys mm. know this guy, Mike Ward? I've heard the name. Yeah. He's like he like got into like a, some civil suit or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he made apparently, uh, I think it was either 2015 or 2016. He made five million dollars to in Quebec. Wow. Like just Quebec. Yeah. I wonder if I can go back and do Pakistan for like, there's no, there's not $5 million in Pakistan. I, think yeah. I, can get I was like, I wonder, is it like a market I'm like totally missing out on? Start talking about goats yeah, and shit. in Karachi? Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? You get paid in goats. Yeah. You get paid in goats. Yeah. It's like, I will give you the little one to get a standing in ovation. Goats. <laughs> you get a sheep too. Wait, in goats instead of ingots? No, in, in goats. goats. Yeah. Like you, get you get paid goat. in yeah. goats. So, but, um... 
uh, for the foreseeable future, you want to be hanging around in in, in Toronto. Yeah, I'm also make, like finishing school here yeah, because I got to do that too. You know? Oh, you went back. Yeah, 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 I went back. Uh, it's it's gotten to the point where the brown the brown parents still came, still came through a bit. It's easier to do a math degree than it is to deal with my parents talking to me about how I should do a math degree. So I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sort of resigned to it, and also oh, it'll make me smarter or something, and that will hopefully make me funnier. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's content, jokes? right? Yeah. It's yeah. content to be like, hey, I have this degree that I don't do anything with. Yeah. It, I hopefully it's at least content. Yeah. Right. If nothing <laughs> yeah. else. Do I don't know. Like, I already feel... Some, it's only been, like, a week and a half of classes, but I already feel smarter. Like, okay. it just, like, it's teaching me to just, like, think about things in a very different way. I guess, I don't know, like, my dad was an engineer. You're an engineer as well. Uh, he was all... You always... That's all he'd talk about all day. He'd be like, man, the engineering, it makes you so smart. It makes you look at it, the world in a different way. I never understood until, like, oh, I'm doing this, like, hard math. Right. I'm like, oh, things are just more clear. Everything's uh, more straightforward. What are you studying? Um, mathematics and its applications. Oh boy, what a riot, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you were trying to choose something to appease your parents. Uh, that is a very interesting choice. Yeah. Oh. I, well, because I'm like, I, it goes, because like, I still want nice things, you know? That, that's what it all comes back to. It's like, okay. comedy is going to take a long time right. uh, before I'm like making any money, mm -hmm. much less like good money, right. uh, if that ever happens. So I'm like, I'd like to have a good job. I'm going to like, go through the whole thing of actually going to school i'm like oh, i'll get something nice no that makes like, sense that makes perfect sense at. yeah no i agree it uh, I, did, I was doing like i started in biochemistry but i did philosophy for a year which i really enjoyed but i'm like what am i gonna do if i finish philosophy like what what happens after that right i'm just gonna be this is, that's the old joke like the smartest broke guy or whatever you know probably do better at slam poetry yeah that's probably what happens <laughs> with your philosophy yeah, that's, degree that's what'll happen i'll get off philosophy i'll be like man i gotta slide right back into slam poetry <laughs> make it big in that scene oh no i don't know yeah. if they even have a scene uh do you have like root do you find like crowds and this is something i've heard yeah that crowds in toronto can be ruder than other parts of canada I don't, uh, I've only performed here. Yeah. So. I, I've only done like a couple of actual shows mm -hmm. out here. I've just mostly been running open mics. Right. And like I, because I was just like lazy about like booking stuff. So now like yeah. I have stuff like next month. That's when I'm going to have actual shows. Uh, and so I don't know what the real crowds are like. Mm -hmm. I know what the open mics are like. There, Everyone's you know, doing whatever. But yeah. Uh, from like the, from the shows I've watched though, it seems, it seems about the same, honestly. I think so. Yeah. I've been told we're dicks. I don't feel like we're dicks. No, I think people, they just like see a big city full of people like, ah, oh, I bet they're all assholes or something. Yeah. They're all assholes. Yeah. And yeah. then you get into their basements and you figure out they're nice guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, like Yasin and I. <laughs> Walk right by that. Yeah. That <laughs> concrete sink. Did you ever feel like you needed like other brown comics? Or, like once you saw like uh, Hassan Minhaj or Aziz or... Kumail, you're yeah. like, ah, uh, I know for you, you saw your the teacher and you were like, this is a real person, I'm a real person. Yeah. Did it help to see a brown comic and be like, hey, Definitely. he's talking about Garachi? Yeah. It like yeah, it made it it made it like real, like, oh, this mm. is a thing I can actually do. Seeing someone like I'm not gonna have to be the first brown guy to yeah. do comedy, which is so comforting. Yeah, I, yeah. I felt this I, after I saw Kumail, yeah, I was just talking about jizzing on the ceiling in Karachi. Yeah. Oh, there's something I could talk about, man. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. It's not even <laughs> His, but it was like, it yeah. felt like, yeah, this is so much more... He, he, he might have been the first comic with a thick accent that was really funny to yeah. me. Yeah, and not me, using like the, his accent as the... Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shake cakes? Yeah. Oh my God. Because, <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> so he's, just, good. he's writing jokes about like, just like whatever. Like, it's not right. all about him being brown, which yeah. is like, I like that that's... Because when I was in Kelowna, I was, mm -hmm. I was doing stand-up there as well. Like, I, when I went out on stage, I always had to address that I was brown in yeah. some way. Like it was, it would be like if I was like missing my face, you know, right. and I didn't say anything about <laughs> yeah. it. They'd you be like, "Why isn't he talking way. about the face thing?" Yeah, you know? that's <laughs> all we can big stare at. Yeah, it's his missing face, and then I can't see them staring. I'd be pretty bad stand if I was missing my face. I wouldn't have a mouth. I wouldn't be able to talk. It'd be a whole thing. No, but but that would be impressive though. That guy, yeah. that guy has yeah. some balls. That would on be him. like a real like one of those like bravery. Yeah, I like, got people stories. I got totally yeah. has some balls. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't have a face. I was really doing it. Yeah, no, but. Like, what was I talking about? That's all right, yeah. man. Yeah, Brown it, comics, it, it, yeah. Hassan Minhaj. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guys, like, so, so I, I don't have to address it. And like in bigger cities like Vancouver or here, I don't have to do that. That's mm -hmm. not a thing. And so I imagine when like brown people first started doing comedy, that you all, you know where you are, you would have had to address it. I like that I don't have to do that. Yeah. I can talk about being brown if I want to. I don't have to. Yeah. yeah. 
That's that is very, very comforting. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We got to go back to back on the last show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, they stuck all the brown guys in one spot. Just <laughs> me and him. Get them get through. Just get them <laughs> yeah. through. <laughs> when I, saw, uh, him out. Yeah. I got to see Hassan Minhaj do his uh, stand-up sad dad. Was it? Where was it? Um, was it Panasonic so or Sony? One yeah. of the others. Pan- Either way. And he was up there and he spoke about his life and he spoke about brown culture very openly. He spoke in Urdu for yeah. a while. And I just did never thought like a whole crowd of... Torontonian. There's some brown people, primarily white people would like this would resonate. It's just yeah. he's doing his comedy, what he finds funny, and people are catching up. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start talking about some of my crazy brown stuff that's yeah. happened to me and not yeah. and like honestly, it's you're right. It makes a huge difference knowing that, you know, Aziz Hassan. Oh, Regardless exactly. of what you might think of their comedy, even if you don't love it, yeah. It just definitely does make it easier as a person of color to go up there and do my stupid goat joke or whatever, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. It's like I, I it was something as recently the gay rights movement, but like they're saying the hallmark of any kind of like civil rights thing is visibility, it's mm-hmm. being visible, and I think that's why like brown people doing comedy is important. That's the yeah. only justification I've been able to give for comedy being important in any way for me. <laughs> I think other than mm-hmm. that, it's like fun but generally useless. Yeah. You know? uh, but it's um, but I'm just like the, if I'm out there, if you're out there, mm-hmm. if if all of us are can be seen by white people then like we become less weird and then like yeah. racism kind of decreases which is nice yeah i think like people seeing Hassan Minhaj like speak urdu on netflix that's right? amazing yeah people are like oh that language doesn't sound alien foreign and like like crazy to me now it's yeah. like oh it's the way some guy talks i i feel you know how some people would be like you know now since we've had a black president i don't think you need a black president or a senator you actually just need like other things you can relate to like yeah. art more yeah. than more than like accomplishment in a career in the sense of like because yeah, Obama's guy. like dope, but I can't relate to. Yeah, him. you oh. went to Harvard. I think, Who's I think in most the ghetto? people, I think no, no one. It's not that many people that can relate to him apart yeah. from the fact yeah. that he's yeah. race. Yeah, yeah, he went to Harvard. Right. He did cocaine. Two things I've never done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Never mind. Yeah. Two I, things I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought of like, oh, I grew up in Hawaii with a white mom. Yeah. Like that never happened to me. Yeah. It's hard to relate to. But a guy doing stand up about like everyday thing, all of a sudden that takes that veil off a lot easier. Yeah. You know, compared to this. So no, it's really cool. I'm glad like the time I saw you, I'm like, here's a brown guy not making brown jokes. You got to have him on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Scoop him quick. Yeah. I got that phone call. Yeah. But yeah. before I <laughs> get pigeonholed and I start writing only brown jokes. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, big. At that point, he's only been here for a month. Yeah. I'm like, let's get him on quick. Yeah. Before he gets weird. He's got a weird accent. Don't let it throw you off. <laughs> it's 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 annoying because I I have I have jokes about being brown. I th- I think they're interesting enough that like I feel okay doing them. They're mm-hmm. not like hacky boring stuff. But they're not my favorite jokes. But they always do the best. Mm-hmm. That annoys me to yeah. no end. You know. I'm like, I'm like if I was a white guy, then I wouldn't even have to tell these jokes. I could like yeah. do all my other weirdo stuff that right. I like. You know. But it's like this is what people want. I, th- I think it's some, so to some degree, still an expectation, right? Yeah. Because it's still, yeah. still a minority. I still, still a little like still do. I guess kind of have to address it. Yeah, yeah. just a little. Yeah. I mean, you you can choose not to in the city. Yeah, However, right. if you do, you might get a couple big laughs. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have one joke where I do a slight accent. And everybody goes that accent joke. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. Yeah. Yeah, I got done after the last set of Any of that worth keeping? Like that accent joke. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> People laugh at that. Yeah, do other right. well, I mean, it's good that either both of you know that it's a thing, yeah. right? That you can, you can. I don't know. Maybe sometimes if you're like, if you're seeing that the set's going one way, you gotta like inject a little bit of uh, of of, uh, of laughs back into it, yeah. win them back, and then after take them, take them to where you want to go yeah. again. You can always, you can, you always use that to your advantage, mm-hmm. right? Um, sorry, no. Oh, I just wanted to know what's what's your what's your process like in putting your like your writing process like. Uh, Pretty scattered and random. I think. Uh, I think I feel like I should have a better writing process, <laughs> but I. I don't. Uh, I mean, I, I. I have some things that I think are like cool and smart, and then other things like the, just writing stand-up jokes. Mm-hmm. It's completely random. I just try and sit down for not even in a full chunk, but a total of half an hour a day. And, like try and sit down and write, and then also like think about the jokes and like try and talk them out a little bit. And find punchlines, and that that's like some days I'm like, oh, I need gonna go over old stuff and mm-hmm. see if I can make it funnier. Some days I'm like, oh, I'm gonna see if I can think of a new idea. I'm just kind of sit there for half an hour and hope I think of a new idea. It's so random. There's no consistent. Every day I'm like, this could yeah. be the last joke I ever write, and I'm done. I have nothing left I feel in like me. Every yeah. comic has something. I have one comic who's like, I only write on the bus. Yeah, and I was like, what if you don't ride the bus? It's like I don't write that day. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's your really process. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but like people, I feel like everybody has a different like. No, nah, I'm just like wherever, whenever. If I remember that I am supposed to write today, I'll like try and do it. And I gotcha. I normally, get, I normally get something. How much do you like just get on? Like, you, all right, I've got this, you know, vague ideas that I like funny. I'm gonna get on stage and I'm gonna riff about this and see what happens. It like it really depends on the idea. I, I gotcha. Uh, like some things are like like if I like have like a joke about race or mm-hmm. something. And I'm coming from a, from a well-informed place. Then I feel like I can maybe just like mess around with that and riff about it and just talk about it. Whereas like if I have like a joke joke, yeah. I think that needs to be pretty dialed. There's right. not a lot you can change there. I got you. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, cool, man. You don't have like a heavy process in terms of like... I mean, I, as far as like... Th- this is a thing I think I do that other people don't do as much. But like I write a... I like write a lot of sketch and a lot of headline jokes oh. uh, in like in my spare time. I don't show them to anybody. Not, mm-hmm. I'm not ashamed of them. I just like this is yeah. this is just for my own <laughs> okay. getting literally getting better at writing jokes. Right. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Sketch and headline. Can you? Uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> so ri- writing like sketch comedy, writing comedy, comedic sketches. Okay. Okay. I guess okay. That right, right. makes sense. Yeah. I don't know if there's a clearer way to right, right. F- picture that. That part, uh, but like, okay, sketch I got, but like headline. Headline, uh, just a monologue joke. Like you turn on Conan, the jokes he's doing off top, things about the news, stuff like that, uh, where it's like you just kind of like either pick a topic or like pick a specific article of the news and just try and like shoot out 10 jokes on that thing. Mm. Uh, And it it just, it makes you better at understanding what makes a joke. It allows you to see like, because if you, if you were to hypothetically do this and you look at a headline and you're say where I'm at comedically, uh, and the headline's kind of funny. You'll see like two jokes, maybe three jokes immediately. Yeah. Like these are the jokes, right. and then you'll kind of sit there and be like, "Okay, what else about this is funny?" And you'll do that for ten minutes, and then like three more things will pop up. Yeah. I think that's a lot of good comedy is like seeing more and more angles of a specific subject. Right. You know? wow. That's a good like technique too for writing itself. Like yeah. get those juices going and whatnot. And yeah, so I, I think that helps me see more things, or it will uh, the more I do it anyway. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. And also, it's the only way I stay informed. Otherwise, I would not read the news. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you also think that um, you know there's a there's a path for you also in like writing for like a, a like a comedy show? That's kind of like what I think a dream of mine would was like like you you know writers room during the day right. you do stand up at night yeah. and then that's that holy grail. Yeah, yeah you go hit the cellar <laughs> after because yeah. when I went to the cellar in New York, it was everybody odd that was doing comedy that night was this is a a writer for NSL, Michael Che. This is the guy for NSL? Conan. Sorry, SNL. Yeah. Fuck you, comic. Night, uh, Saturday <laughs> Live. <laughs> With Sudeikis uh, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, man, screw you. Uh, no. Uh, but yeah, exactly. That, yeah. And I was like watching that. Like, cut. That's it. It's like it's just a yeah scene. I was like, I don't know what happened to Mark. I guess he died. <laughs> We were, we were just joking about that earlier. Then we decided we have to kill him. <laughs> I'll uh, saran wrap the room. Uh, yeah. Dexter style. <laughs> but you, so you so you saw the cellar, all these like, and that's all stuff. what they were doing. Yeah. It was just their their daytime job is being in that writer rooms for that sitcom or that you know whatever that show was. And yeah. at night they're just working out their jokes. And so a, cool. And a year later you see their Netflix special. Yeah. Everybody I saw at the cellar last year has a Netflix special, every single one of them right wow. now. Wow. That's freaking yeah. Yeah. dope, man. So it was yeah. like, and so much of that material, they all did like 10-minute sets. Yeah. And I was like, I remember this 10 minutes. I remember this 10 minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, oh, this changes so <clears throat> yeah, much. That's really cool. It is really cool, man. I guess that is the dream for, mm. I, th- I, I think creating is Yeah, just the dream. like work at this all the time, yeah. every day. Yeah. Instead of you trying to find that five minutes to yeah. like. <laughs> that bus ride. Yeah, that bus ride or <laughs> yeah. that time away from your work or wife or school or, you know, whatever the, the thing is. I mean, I don't do stand-up comedy at all, but, like, the idea of being in a room filled with writers that are just riffing the for five to six hours yeah. sounds amazing. Mm, like, I've yeah. seen I've seen um, uh, behind the scenes for Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, man, yeah. that, that whole process yeah. and the voiceover stuff looks yeah. like it's a... Like, did you guys even work? Yeah. Like, I know there's a lot of work. They go, they, they go on for like 12 hours sometimes or whatnot, but it's an entire day of laughing. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, As, I, I've done like, a, I've like had a, like a sketch troupe when I was in Vancouver that uh-huh. I was like doing stuff with. And then I've like done like little film projects with friends here and there. Yeah. And it's, I think, like the most fun. It, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's that. You're just like, you're sitting there with your friends just trying to like think of funny stuff, yeah. you know, all day. What a beautiful way to live. Yeah. You know? mm. Yeah. I agree. I think that's what we Let's need to do. Let's quit this. Let's right. start a, our own channel right now, guys. 
right oh, now. Try to do voiceover. You guys yeah. can write. Yeah, yeah. We'll get animators, <laughs> do the whole thing. Um, is there something I have happen every now and then? A little bit of a tangent, but do you ever like watch somebody do stand up and they're like, I'll never be that good. Like you just see somebody that's perfect. Like you see a headliner at like a proper place and yeah. just be like, man, there are, I'm like 19 levels behind where yeah. I need to be. Where you're just like, this guy just had this whole crowd the whole time. There's like, there, there's a level of effectiveness uh, that I think I, I can reach. If mm-hmm. I see anyone like kill, maybe this is arrogance or I don't know, but I'm like, I'll get there eventually. Like right. give it two years, give it 45. Like yeah. eventually I'll, I can be that good at comedy. But there are things that people do stylistically that I'm like, oh, I could never do that. Yeah. Like uh, I think we were talking about Hedberg before. Yeah, I was just thinking thing. the same thing. Once yeah. you said stylistically, no one can touch. No one can yeah. touch Mitch. Yeah. That's once, it. That is a one man. Yeah. Once Mitch did Mitch. It was like, all right, that's been done. Yeah. I didn't even think that was going to work when he was doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he knew it was going to work while he was doing it. Dude, Mitch Hedberg, I don't know if you, you might know this actually, but he was like toiling in obscurity for eight to 10 years. Really? Until he had any success. Yeah. A lot of that was in Montreal. Yeah. And then, you know, after that, he was, he was always respected by comics because he was showing up, he's doing his stuff. But yeah. like, yeah, people didn't love Mitch Hedberg until montreal and then after that it just uh Blew i mean up, yeah. i found out about mitch after he died yeah i mean myself as well yeah, yeah. i was sad and he'd been de- dead for like four years yeah and i found out and i was like oh it sucks i remember finding out like after i listened to his first two albums yeah. and i was i found out i was like oh man i was gonna see him I know. Yeah. why M- mitch died on my birthday yeah <laughs> i was oh, no. I, yeah i was really? on i was uh this was this was during university yeah uh i was on the go train going to going to university and yeah. i was listening to the radio yeah because back then yeah anyway so um and, wait and, when was this <laughs> <laughs> yes he's 47 was this 1985? <laughs> are you a vampire all right so this is what it was is during the back great then, depression <laughs> <laughs> back then mp3 players yeah i had a uh, radio option mine does too yeah. uh, <laughs> it's, there, it's still there right so if you ever uh, missed that old radio <laughs> <laughs> so you know i was listening to like a morning show and they, you know, the DJ was like, you know, today's some sad news. Mitch Hedberg died. Great comedian, whatever, whatever. So when I got to, when I got to school, um, we downloaded off of, was it LimeWire or was it? Mine was the, Napster and LimeWire. Yeah. yeah. I mesh. I down, downloaded uh, his thing just because I wanted to know why this, why this DJ was so sad about this, this, uh, this comedian dying. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Oh, and then man. I started, then right after that was Dane Cook when I started listening to Dane Cook. Yeah. Uh, Dane Cook, but, Cook got a lot of people into comedy. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he was very accessible. It was like, it was, it was a cool yeah. guy. He's yeah, he's never like a big guy for me, but like I, I like what he does. You could just throw cool. Dane Cook just, at a person that doesn't like comedy. Yeah. And they'll laugh. Yeah. yeah. But like if you like, if you're, if you like Stand up, you're and like people this fucking guy. hate him. Yeah, they hate they him. They despise him, and I don't know He's, why. Yeah, I don't agree with that, yeah. but it it is very. It, yeah, it's, it's it's not common. The type of comedy that I I like, like I'm not gonna sit down and listen to a Dan Cook album, but like you know he's you do he's doing well for himself. He's doing <laughs> mad. He, he he was one of the first that was doing arenas. Yeah, like, yeah. That that one where the squared circle or something like that. He, yeah, the stage was in the middle, and the whole crowd was around yeah. him. Like at it's Madison crazy. Square Garden. Yeah. yeah, no, he was he was doing great at a time. I still I still like if I if I see it like on TV or whatever, I'll just go back. Yeah. I, I, yeah. there's some bits there's some bits that just still great. It's just I, I think people sometimes uh, get snobby, and yeah. that's the yeah. weird yeah. thing yeah. about exactly. comedy. People get snobby. Is yeah. that like there's. Uh, Anything is funny is funny, right? Yeah, yeah. It makes somebody laugh. Yeah. But like sometimes people are like, well, this is lowbrow, highbrow alternative and they categorize it. Yeah. Sometimes funny is just funny. And yeah. yeah, maybe he didn't, maybe he's just a spectacular performer. Yeah. But there's something to be said about that. It's still can fun do it. to yeah. watch. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. People are still laughing, I guess. I like, guess yeah. the, the point mostly. Yeah. You're not being like horribly racist. I mean, you know, God love you. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Even if you're being you're, horribly racist, yeah. if you're doing it just right, somehow yeah, you're yeah, like, it's it's still, still I see funny. what you yeah. did. <laughs> We do smell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I have a pretty flexible range <laughs> for the racism, for racism yeah. if it's funny. Yeah. 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 If if it's funny, that's if the only funny. thing. Yeah, yeah. You can't be. That's my rule. Is like if you're a racist level five out of ten, then you have to be funny at least till a seven or an eight. Yeah. You can't be like level eight racist and level five funny. <laughs> yeah. Because then you're just a racist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I seem because I love Bill Burr so much. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of time Bill Burr will pitch you the premise first. Yeah. And then after he will make the joke yeah. win you over. So yeah. by the time he's done, you're like, oh, okay, I get yeah. why he said that. Yeah. 
I, I love that. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's probably one of my favorite ways there's, to there's like, no, manipulate a crowd. There's no good reason to hit a woman? Really? And you're like, wait, you're starting <laughs> you're here? Like, no, I'm not comfortable <laughs> with this at all. I can't laugh at this yeah. yet. Yeah. Tell me where right. Yeah. Tell and then me where to go. Laugh. Like, yeah. You'll take five minutes to do that, and it's just amazing. I love that. He takes so long for him to do that flip, but it's funny all the way across, yeah. Yeah. all the way until the end. So that's my that's my jam right like now. Like Jesselnik for yeah, that reason. Yeah. Because oh he'll start God. with something crazy or eventually he'll get crazy, but you'll laugh and you'll be like, I don't feel good about laughing at <laughs> yes. this. I'm laughing, but I don't want other people to know I'm laughing this hard. You know, yeah. laughing. What, what's what's your uh, like pinnacle guys that you... Yeah, what are, the, what are your people? Uh, top three right now are Rory Scovel. Mm-hmm. Rory? No, I need to listen. Ah, he's he is uh, amazing. I think like one of the most innovative comedians I've ever heard. Mm. Just like the way that he is on stage, the way he writes and structures a joke is insane. Mm-hmm. He's also like just super like riffy and loose and crazy. Oh, so man. I like that a lot. Uh, him, Gerard Carmichael. I know Gerard Carmichael. Uh, very, very much the opposite yeah, of Scovel in I what was... he's doing. Uh, but then also, also amazing. And then... Uh, I guess Hampton Yount would be my third right now. Man, this is like the... Uh, oh, my God. This, this is the... It's like when you ask someone who you like rap and they're just going into like, you know, yeah, just like, three backpackers. I know. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I like Transfuse. <laughs> I like uh, Apoc and D. And you're like, I don't know any of those people. Yeah, what was your I'm third? Like, sorry. Uh, Hampton Yount. I'm only in the deep guts now. I know, man. That's Indies impressive. Yeah. yeah. Made me feel like a like a consumer or something like some sort Wait, of. We're weird, talking about yeah. we're talking about Dane Cook we're here. Dane Cook over here. <laughs> we go to the mall to buy our stuff. He's like, no, I go to the farmer that make it. The chief makes his own sweater. Yeah, and yeah only it to buy me. comedy at the farmer's market. Yeah, whatever exactly. they got, I'm getting. Yeah, it's like get two expensive carrots. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> He's like all of his comedy is organic. Oh my God, this is the first time someone rattled off three comedy names. I don't know. Yeah, a I'm like one I've of heard them. of all those guys. <clears throat> Are any of those people on the internet yet? Yeah, yeah. You have to go to LimeWire, download their stuff. No, these people don't sell out. They only do comedy in their mom's basement. <laughs> but it's authentic. Are you yeah. a comedy hipster is that what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Rory Scovel is fa- he is famous. Yeah. He just had a Netflix special, so yeah. he's doing fine. Yeah. I need to. I need to jump on Michael, it. Actually, They're, he's fine. I need to jump on this, man. Uh, yeah, seen ask him questions. Give me a second. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You're on your phone. What are we gonna do without you? I have no idea. I think you guys will be fine. What if the yeah. podcast suddenly got like way better? Yeah. Like what if it got, <laughs> what if like... we stopped talking and it got so good? Oh, <laughs> making like odd realizations in my head. Yeah, yeah. this guy was on. This we just like happening. both start like talking and it's like the deepest, most philosophical, <laughs> but it's also hilarious. Like we're killing it. I'm like, oh man. And then by the end I of it, you're like, we is... want to thank Yasin for Sayed for coming on. Uh, <laughs> Amar and I are going to be on for Crash and Flow. We're going to be in New York. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what just happened? I was quiet for one minute. Amar you took, blink, I'm married to your wife. I know. Like, Amar you have took to my go life. back to my shitty apartment. <laughs> he drops me off at my house and my Civic. <laughs> He's like, wait, he drops me off at his house and goes back to my house. Bye, the cat's your problem yeah. now. Like, Amar does me better than me. Shit. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Uh, what, were, what did you just say? You were, Ideally, I could just end the podcast there. I'm like, not going <laughs> to... Yeah. With that said, yeah, this guy's on This Is Not Happening, that Ari Shafir show. Okay. Which is not... that. I'm so sad that that show is canceled it's over yeah. well they i saw they did it in uh in montreal this year oh. they had to call it like uh ari shafir storytelling show or whatever because yeah. like something with the copyright <laughs> right. messed up. oh my yeah. god that's you can't. horrible yeah. yeah it's silly what that ari said. shafir is silly yeah silly he man. let go he let go he let go of one of the best one of the best storytelling comedy shows yeah I've that's that's seen. the famous pop and everyone listen to it when you're young and you don't care you're like whatever i'm gonna go travel for a while and yeah. come back with new material oh, he definitely doesn't care about nothing yeah i like that in a man i don't know i think he, i think i think he needs a little bit of shame i listened to a po- I was watching that podcast with him like burt kreischer and do you watch uh do you listen to joe rogan podcast at all uh no no I, everyone tells me that i have to and i'm supposed to but i just i can't do it man if you don't want to you don't want to it's too long and he's just long. talking about all this stuff and i'm tired you know <laughs> he's like i'm already tired <laughs> I'm, al- I'm already <laughs> tired i don't need to listen to this guy spout off about this and that and whatever and who cares you know? right exactly yeah. right yasin all right now i don't want to watch it either yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> convince you i have a pretty good so super easy vague and no points that i'm actually making <laughs> yeah, i don't make sense i'm already swayed yeah. <laughs> you gotta go burn that t-shirt yeah uh, are you sure if you appeared in a bottle twice in that podcast 
Yeah, he peed. Last time he, he was on, he didn't want to get up and lose any of the things that were happening. He was like, yeah. I still I don't want to miss anything. He was peeing in a bottle twice. I was, well, that's yeah, a, that's I commitment, I guess. But you know what? That's the weird thing about comics. You let comics get away with weird. Like, yeah. I know certain comics, and they're super unorganized with yeah. their life to the point where it's dangerous as an adult to be that unorganized <laughs> yeah. with one's life. But you're, like, acceptable. Yeah. Because yeah. you're like, they're an artist. They'll figure it out. It's just like, and when somebody has their shit all together, you're like, that guy's just posing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that guy's not a comic. He has a daytime job and a wife. <laughs> yeah, it feels weird because like, I think in the real world, the, like how together my life is, is like, I don't know, like a five out of 10. Like yeah. it's fine, but like things should be better than they <laughs> right. are uh, at the age that I'm at. Like my friends are like all graduating university. I'm restarting, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, like in comedy world, like I'm fucking killing. Yeah, I am so on top like, of my stuff. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm, I'm like going to university. Right. I'm living in an apartment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you threw up on the drive here, yeah. and I was like, "That's a comic. That's yeah. a comic too. <laughs> yeah, that's a true comic right yeah. there." While he leans on this tree, and he's just like dry heaving, <laughs> and he did it. He was like, Bleh. and he came back, and I was like, "Is your tic tac?" <laughs> yeah, I th threw up on the way here because I'm a, I'm a mess. But in like as far as like comedy world goes, like you would have gotten someone who gotten so drunk they would just miss this whole thing exactly. entirely. Like, like, I'm still here. That was like this guy had the shit together. Which means I'm killing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is what I keep telling myself and your parents and, and they my don't parents. Listen. Yeah, <laughs> they're not yeah, getting it. Their sliding scale is much different. Yeah, yeah like, you don't have a wife yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your hat oh boy well yeah. i think you have your shit together i like it thank you yeah. i know i saw that guy i was like that guy has shit together oh, man we should have him on the podcast where um um where are you hitting up the next uh like let's say if people listening to this in the next next month yeah there we go let's go there next month shoot up shoot up yeah, yeah. Shoot next month. let's see if i have <laughs> he's gonna have some odd things he's just like i'm a cam h uh, at an AA meeting <laughs> at eight o'clock every Tuesday night. No, no, just shows, man. Just shows, not uh, therapy. I'm sleeping. I'm supposed to have a day with this girl, and if she's gonna get back to me. Oh, uh, shit. Are you on Tinder? I you... am. I am on Tinder. Yeah, yeah. that's what I figured. Right. Young, as a comic, do you feel like you know people actually like they're like, ooh, comic swipe properly? Is that in your bio? No, I didn't used to be, but I had like a, I was talking to some like other comedy friends. They were very emphatic. You got to put it in your bio. It's got to be in there. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I know I was like, like keeping comedy just separate from like the dating thing. Yeah. You know, where it's like comedy is like my secret special little thing. Mm -hmm. And then like, it's the main thing. And then a girl will come in and maybe she becomes part of that. I may introduce her to it, but otherwise, yeah. you know, keep them separate. I agree. That makes sense. Like it feels like I'm like, I'm pushing, I'm using comedy to try and like have sex, which I don't, yeah. I don't want that to be what it's for. Right. You know? And she's going to show up and you're like, Hey, you're funny, but not, yeah. you know, like, yeah, not comedy funny. Not <laughs> like have sex with you funny. Yeah. Can you imagine how hard you'd have to make a girl laugh for her to like have sex with you? Yeah, it seems difficult. Yeah. I, I, it I wonder. I'm difficult. asking. <laughs> yeah. this is, it seems like I'm asking an open question. I'm asking you directly. I'm like, hey, have you ever had a girl laugh <laughs> so hard so I can live vicariously through yeah, you? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think like people, I've, I've definitely been with people who are attracted to the fact mm. that I am funny. It says, it sounds so weird to say no, I'm no. funny. Keep saying yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. No, <laughs> but, but they're, they're attracted. Go messy, you punch in the back of the head yeah. in a minute. <laughs> It, it, it feels weird to say because comedy, you're just like all day, you're like practicing being interesting and funny. Yeah. And like when you meet people, people like that. That's a thing that people are into. So it, it's, it makes sense that it would help. And yeah. I think it, it does. To a certain I've, extent. I've had people like find out after like we start dating or whatever that I do comedy mm -hmm. and like they're, they're very into it. I think it's, oh, it's just cool. like a, it's like a weird thing to do. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. if you're like skydiving or like. I don't know, yeah. boxing or something. You know? Right. Yeah. No, that's true. Except nobody goes, like, you skydiving? I'll come out and watch you. But yeah. a lot of my friends will watch you fall out of the sky. Yeah, yeah. And then no one shows up. Yeah. But comedy, I've had, like, people be like, hey, I'll bring, like, I've had 10 people show up that I barely know at an open mic. Yeah. Which only has 10 people to start off with. And you're like, you guys didn't know you're getting into it. Yeah. Right? You yeah. didn't you realize you're going to be in the basement of a. You realize you're watching the worst comedy in the city. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, the people before me are punishing you yeah. for making the decision. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to punish you a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's an open mic. It's a weird vibe. It's like one guy working out his, like, JFL set and you just, like, crush him. Yeah. And then three people with, like, a thousand rape jokes. You're like, ah, yeah. you guys shouldn't do this. Yeah. That's. And then, and then one person just like tells a sad story with no jokes in it. And then you're back to the, another JFL guy. And you're like, Yo, okay, I guess this is what comedy is. Last show, that lady 
You know that lady, that older lady that oh, showed up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I was just like... She seemed really sweet, but it's like, ah, you, just, you, you seem sad a bit. Yeah, you, you know? seem very sad about where your life is. Yeah. I can't laugh. You're, just in, a, you're in a rough place. <laughs> it's, and I too, yeah. it's a little too raw. Yeah, like I, I want, like sometimes like I just want to help you. I yeah. don't want to laugh at you. Yeah. That feels wrong. Right. I was like... It was like kicking a puppy, you know? Just it's right. not... It's not good. If I, when I laugh, if I could just yell out advice and phone numbers to like helplines, I would totally laugh. Yeah. At the yeah. same time, if that was a possibility. One hundred. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, where do people like uh, catch up with you on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook? Uh, I'm at uh, Real Exciting on Instagram. Say word. <laughs> huh? It better be. Yeah. Real. I like it. I think I think it is. Uh, <laughs> at, at my wife right on Twitter. Whoa. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. you know what people normally go with their like name or something. Yeah, yeah, th- that would be smart. No, no, it's but better this way. Also, I, I know, can't find my name. Exactly, it's so common. There's just too many of our things. Yeah. Ask Sayad Raza. Yeah, God Graham. Yeah, you know, like trust me. Yeah, you got your own name on there. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I had to write other things at the end of it to make it my name. Yeah. All right, are we good on time, Yas? <clears throat> yeah, we're good. Um, I just wanted to get the get your dates out as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you have uh, any because, solidified because ones? If not, we can plug them in later. Yeah, we can. Yeah, exactly. Uh, on um, okay, these yeah, these are all kind of far away. On October twelfth, at the Gladstone Hotel. Ooh, he's uh, at a hotel. hotel. Uh, October sixteenth, I'm at Hard Day Comedy. Wow. Uh, November fourteenth, I'm at I'll Be Seeing You, which is at a restaurant called I'll Be Seeing You. So okay, it's pretty easy to find. It's okay, uh-huh. there you these go. are. <clears throat> None of these are gigantic ass of shows, no, that's all right. but they're all fun. And if you're here, you know, come on out. Yeah, no, I'll give you a kiss on the night. cheek, and we'll hold hands. Oh, yeah. dude! Whoa, whoa, here, whoa. listen, guys. <laughs> Once you see this picture, you might want this kiss on the yeah. cheek, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. true. That hair is. Uh, it's. It was hard for me not to constantly try to yeah, throw you, the conversation right down, like, yeah. down that way. Yeah. Like I, I love the Sikh religion. I'm like, yeah, man. Don't cover <laughs> yeah. that up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> let that be oh, free, but. Boy. All right, guys. All right, man. Thanks for hanging out. Hey, man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good despite time. you know, you, you you pulled through. You threw yeah, up. Trooper. I got that phone call from Sayed. I'm like, so is he oh, not coming? Him? Yeah, <laughs> there might be a minute late. You snitched me out. <laughs> no, man. That was that I was can't cool. Believe this. Was, no. oh, my. I'm like, do, do I, I need to p- stack up on Tic Tacs? Yeah. This know? is how much of a pro he was because I was like, we might be 10, 15 minutes late. Yeah. He comes by the tree, comes back, and he's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> I was like, all right, like a champ. I love it. Still young, baby. Yeah, still, still young, baby. Give it 10 yeah. years and they're like, that's yeah. the day. <laughs> all right, people, that's the end of the podcast. Thanks for hanging out. We'll be back in a week. Take care of yourselves. Good night.